we're a fairly unique city because of the grid that we were um, platted on when we were first settled. So big wide streets, big huge blocks, which from a, a, na a neighborhood perspective is really challenging. Uh, you want smaller blocks and smaller streets because it helps build that interaction and that social fabric. And so we have a big challenge trying to face that or trying to deal with that. What's one of the great things about Salt Lake City is when you get away from our, our core area into these neighborhood nodes, such as the Marmalade Block, everybody knows about 9th and 9th or 15th and 15th, um, you know, even Sugar House neighborhood on a little bit larger scale. All of, when you start looking at those places, they all have a lot of common characteristics. There's places for you to go and meet people and interact with people, to run into your neighbors, run into your, your kids' friends from school, all of those things, whether it's at a business, a sandwich shop, a park, like I said, uh, utilizing a trail. So we, we're fortunate that we have those nodes established. And a lot of those nodes were established because of how we, were, how we grew up. We grew up as a streetcar city. If you were to look at the old streetcar grid, a lot of those meeting points are where street lines, streetcar lines intersected. And so we have these, nat these, not natural, but we have these historic patterns in our city that we're trying to capitalize on. We're in a period where we're trying to redo our zoning a little bit. And we're focusing on these nodes and our corridors uh, because they're the opportunity and, and provide the, the, the best places for us to grow. One of the things that's really important is linking how we move around to where we're going um, so that we can, we can tie in our housing, our jobs, uh, our, our uh, shopping, all of those things so that they can be relatively close to where people live so they have choices on how they move about and where they're going. If, you're, if your only choice is a car, then you add those added expenses. Um, you get auto-oriented development like big parking lots things like that, which don't generate revenue for the business owners, and they also don't generate property tax revenue for the cities. And so it's, it's kind of a lost opportunity, and we want to reimagine re that. So we're going through and updating our zoning to what's called a form-based code, and we're starting to do that strategically in those places where we either think there's great opportunity or where there's already really solid bones in place to, to build on. Um, and so that's that's kind of what we're doing today. Hopefully, what we what we want to talk about today is how we deal with that infill development. How do we respect the scale of what's around, but also achieve our city goals of um, housing and growth and, and those types of things? A form-based code, in the simplest terms, is basically it's a type of zoning that looks at the the type of building it is and the shape of the building versus the use of the building. Most of our zoning is a use-based, meaning you can do a list of what of permitted uses or a list of conditional uses, and then you just have some really loose kind of um, setbacks and building height regulations. Where in a form-based code, you're really looking at that type of building. So uh, a, a townhome will have different characteristics than a single family home, and you can cater those standards to those zoning rules to deal with that. Same with commercial businesses or public buildings like the library behind us. Um, we can write those rules so that they can fit in better, acknowledging that some buildings are bigger by nature than what's around them. And so the form-based code allows us to, to respect that a little bit more and, and break, at least from a visual standpoint, break down larger buildings so they look smaller than they really are. For more information, you can go to our website at slc.gov planning.